What's going on everybody? Today I've got the new Axial Capra four wheel steer edition here on the bench. Now, this is generally the same Capra you're used to seeing, but now with a second copy of the front axle located in the rear. That's the biggest difference. But that's not the only differences as just trying to take a front axle and put it in the rear of a Capra isn't exactly a plug and play situation. So we're gonna go over the changes that they've made to this Capra and then I'm gonna go take it out on the rocks, get some run time with it. The biggest difference is of course the addition of a steering axle in the rear. It is the exact same as the front. Any parts for the front portal of a Capra will work in the rear portal of the four wheel steer version of this Capra. So. Nothing new as far as that goes other than just having that back there. One of the other big differences is that this cage is actually significantly different and that's not something that I immediately realized when I saw the release of the vehicle. The cage sides have been completely redone to accommodate the up travel that the servo needs to clear the cage. The original capper rear cage had a much taller rear section here and people who used to build custom four wheel steer, they used to have to modify that themselves. Now this one is much tighter and you get full compression and that rear servo still clears. Now that still clears with the longer stock capper shocks that does sit this thing up in the air a ways. So if you run a shorter shock, then you're gonna start running into some clearance issues again, but it does look like they've given you a little bit of room still to tuck that servo between the frame rails. So something to note, just by trying to add a little bit of clearance back here, they basically had to redo the entire side of the capper. So it's mainly a new cage, even though it looks the exact same. Little things like that actually are big projects. So it was cool to see that they went to that effort just to be able to release this version of the truck. Now I did get the red version of the molded cage. It's coming in a red and then the normal black. The black version has a Nitto livery where this red version has the Curry livery on it. It's coming with the Nitto Trail Grappler 1.9 tires mounted onto the beadlock wheels. These are the Raceline Monster design all plastic design, the screws from the backside sandwich the halves of the wheels together to hold those in place. Previously, one of the features of the capper that was touted quite a bit was the fact that it does have a dig. Now this is still the exact same transmission and it still has the dig function ability. Inside are all of the internals needed, but there's a spacer located on the shift fork that locks the dig into the four wheel drive position because there is no servo on the inside for that. Instead, the three channel DX3 radio that's included controls the rear steer instead of being able to control the dig. So if you want to add dig, you're going to need a different radio, a four or a five channel radio. That way you can have the dig servo, rear steer, front steer, and throttle. Talking about the radio and the programming. Now, the rear steer of this is operated on a toggle switch here on the bottom. Now it's operated independently of the front. So when you steer the front, nothing happens to the rear. And this has been something that we've been running in competition type four wheel steer trucks for over a decade. Having it operate independently from the front is really the way that it has worked best in competition that entire time. You don't want a mixed steering. You know, when you turn one way, it turns the rear the opposite. For competition or just the maximum amount of capability, having it operated independently is the way to go. It does take a little bit of getting used to though because you're obviously usually just used to steering the front, but just work yourself into the rear steer idea slowly. Don't try and overuse it. Don't use it when you don't need it. Just when you get into a tough situation, start using that rear to manipulate the vehicle around. Out of the box, it's set up so when you hit the toggle switch, it will move the tires halfway in that direction. And then you can hit it once more to go the rest of the way. Then you back it off manually to recenter and then you have the same, the opposite direction. It's five positions for rear steering. That is exactly the way that I've set up my own rear steer vehicles in the past, no matter the radio, exact same settings, five positions. It's just a great, easy to use, simple to maneuver and simple enough to handle under you know the pressure of a timed course or just while driving around you don't have to fumble around so much. So I think that the setup they did for the radio on this is really perfect. It is the same DX3 that we've been seeing as of late. It's got the little adapter that sticks out so you can more easily drive it one handed which I typically do. It's got the Spectrum Smart technology in there so it has the battery telemetry built in if you're using Smart Spectrum batteries. That's one caveat. You have to use that to be able to take advantage of the telemetry. 
Beyond that, this is mainly the same capper that you've seen before. And if you're just not familiar with it, let's just do a few quick high level overview points just to get you up to speed with the Capra. Now compared to a normal 1.9 trail buggy, which this does run 1.9 wheels and tires, it's wider than a standard axle. The axles on this are about an inch and a half wider than an SCX 10 3, for example. We've got a 10 and a half inch track width with these Nitto trail grappler tires on here, where the Axial SCX 10 3 with the Nitto trail grapplers which has about a nine inch track width. So a significant width difference between the two. Now, the other difference between a normal 1.9 trail buggy as of late is that the servos are mounted onto the axle. They're not mounted onto the chassis or anything like that. Then the suspension setup is a four link in both the front and rear. That typically goes along with those axle mounted servos. Also, these axles are a portal axle, an important thing to note. And if you're not familiar with what a portal is, specifically it's out here at the end of the axle. In this case, it's integrated into the steering knuckle. The axle shaft comes from the ring gear, it goes out and then it goes into a gearbox, which lowers the output further so that it gives you additional clearance under the axle. Also, in the case of the capper, it also adds additional reduction, which is nice. That takes stress off the ring and pinion, the drive shafts, the center transmission, everything by moving some of that reduction outwards towards the end of the vehicle. As the livery on the side would suggest, these axles are also Curry branded. So they've got the Curry logo molded right into the plastic on the front and rear axle housings. The transmission on the inside is a different design than you'll find in any other axial. The gearing on it is lacking though. There's not quite enough gear reduction in that transmission. That's still something that wasn't updated not the best situation there. The motor that comes in this truck is a 35 turn and that's gonna have a bit more pep than you would expect from a 35 turn normally just because of that lack of reduction in that stock transmission. Something that there's not much they can do about without redoing the transmission design. So you can use the smallest pinion that you have available to try and help that. Otherwise, just make sure you don't run too hot of a motor. Otherwise, you're gonna end up with a oddly fast trail truck. The ESC that's used in this is the Spectrum Firma 40, which is an all-in-one receiver ESC combo. That's nice and compact, and in something like the Capra, it's needed because there's not much room inside of these buggies. Definitely a bit of a pain to work on. To get inside, you have to disassemble a large amount of the truck. It's eight or 10 screws just to get things off. Not that convenient in, in any way to work on. So. Try and get your stuff set up in there and hope that you don't have to get in there often. This rig also has stainless steel links out of the box all the way around. It's nice to have a beefy stainless link like that. They still have those adjustment screws through the center, which are just a huge pet peeve of mine. I can't stand the look of them on a truck like this. They're, it's like a turnbuckle style. I don't know. It just bugs me. There's no reason to have that on a trail truck, but it does have LED headlights and a little light bar included out of the box wired into that on all the time, plug it in, you'll have some lights. Also, these shocks now come in this dark gray anodized color. These are around a 100 millimeter long shock. They do have a bleeder screw on the top, which is nice. Compress it, make sure that there's not too much oil in there that would over pressurize and blow out seals. And then put that bleeder screw in, make sure that everything is functioning properly. The shocks are nice and smooth out of the box, I will say. Uh, some of the better shocks Axial's ever had. And in the case of this RTR, at least, there's no oil around the link mounts or anything like that. So they seem to be retaining oil just fine so far. But with that, you guys have seen the capper before, likely. Let's get this new version out on the rocks and show you what the real difference of this truck is all about. stumbled across an actual little competition course so i'm gonna run on time yeah, here, here. yeah as long as like the tires you know maybe touching the stone and then one's heading up right here two right here get yourself over here without hitting four and up to two threes up back and, down four and then you loop you can come in that channel or more braver line into here for four five crossing across to the right for six looping wherever you want to then i recommend coming down on the right side of six in that channel because you can't go through it backwards obviously so entrance right there <coughs> into seven eight nine and finishes on a nasty ten how many minutes six minutes i went through with a plus six but a finish i'm gonna have tony film <laughs> I got on your move driver yeah. so. 
So Tony was standing a little bit away, so I'll just kind of give you a voiceover of what I'm doing here. You can see this gate just use a little bit of rear steer there just to square things up. Being that this course was made for scale trucks, the rear steer was handy just to be able to fit the wider capra through the gates. So gate two, I had to drop down. There was a gate below me to the left of the truck there, so I had to try and stay a little bit higher. I did kind of approach it on just so to keep the truck as flat as possible and then use the rear steer to maneuver it more square to the gate. I did push the front end a little bit past, but I was able to correct it just by pushing the rear steer further and then straightening up. And we're going to drive up that now. Just driving through straight, a little bit of rear steer to correct it to make sure we dodge the gates. Three is up through this little V crack here. I also noticed that I had a smudge on the GoPro. I apologize for that. So needed to traverse across these cracks without high centering. Try to straighten up and then get squared to the gates with the rear steer. Going in, correcting just a little bit to stay away from the gate. At this point now, I'm just trying to decide on how to get down to four. Four is the one that I had to avoid when approaching gate two. So I'm going to go on the high side and drop down into four. With the poor gearing in this capper, you'll notice that I go a little bit too fast down that. It was I was lucky that I was lined up properly, but it doesn't have enough drag brake because the gearing is, uh, is a little bit lacking. So now I've got to line up and go through this uh, kind of tight wedge spot here. It's hard to see from this camera angle, but this is kind of a tricky gate. A little bit of I was rear steering up the hill there. And then just get myself squared away. Using the rear steer just to turn around quickly, which was nice. I was on a narrow ledge there, and this truck is wide, so I steered with the rear just to keep it up on there. You can see it fell down a little bit at the end. Doesn't look like I used rear steer on that gate at all. So maneuvering around again, super tight turnaround, as you can see. Now I'm going to go back down past six and then kind of do a uh, turn around that large rock where that's uh, gate seven's hiding behind. You might be better off just making, you know, the turn from down in here. Yeah. I was doing my scale truck, so I had to move out there. There you go. This would just not be a line you'd be able to easily do with a normal scale truck and front steering only. Tight steering with that to try and keep me close to the rock. And then drive right through it. Time judge. Uh, this gate eight was a, a real easy, just kind of a gimme gate. Just have to fit through it. No rear steer at all, just drive. Gate nine is harder than it looks here. Basically, you kind of had to hang off of the side of this, uh, that boulder there. The width of this truck was, was more difficult, but I was able to drive in a way that it kept the traction and then I could just kind of use the rear steering to, to push me around and keep me in contact with the rock the whole time. Break over with the, the tall stance actually worked out okay there. Gate 10 is a, is a tough one. I, I'll struggle here for a second. I'll actually flip over and have to, to come back and reapproach it. Up to this point, I hadn't had any penalties on the course. That was not a penalty there because it flipped over backwards, but I have to take some reverses. There was one reverse right there. Another reverse right there. So I still have, an, I still have quite a bit of time. Uh, another reverse, so that's three rever reverses. You can see I was getting a little flustered and, and rear steering the incorrect direction of what I thought I was going to go. Now this way I kind of take a approach where I come at it diagonally to stretch the wheelbase a little bit. I was able to 
get that left front tire up there to hook and then drive it right up and then just correct a little bit with the rear steer to fit through without hitting the gate. Nice. 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 Sweet. Bone stock. It actually did really well. No weight. No nut. Rear steer changes. The Rear steer is. That, it's a, a not. It's an unfair thing. Totally. Dang, What's up, bud? How you How you doing? doing? Thanks for the calm course, Dixon. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. Yeah. We're done, though. You on deck, right? I didn't see the little bag. A lot of fun to run the comp course. I was really surprised with this little thing. No weight, no overdrive, just four wheel steer. It still sits high. The gearing is too tall still. Man, it needs to get, it needs a lower ratio, but overall that was a blast. So today out on the rocks, the truck did way better than I expected. In the past, the Capra has not been my favorite performing truck, but with the four wheel steer, it totally changed my feeling on how it drove and I actually really, really enjoyed it. The gearing, still a problem. It still needs lower gearing. Just ab I will say that if you've never owned a truck with four wheel steer, this is a great one to pick up. It's capable right out of the box. There's plenty of upgrades and options for the capper that you can pick up and turn this thing into whatever you like in the future. But out of the box right now, how this ran, I was super happy with it. I was super happy to find that they had a comp course set up at the event today so that I could take this through it. That was not an easy course. If you were running that course with a typical scale truck, you would not have found it nearly as easy as this truck made it look. Four wheel steer does take some getting used to if you've never done it in the past. A little bit of just getting used to the button arrangement. Even I fumbled a couple of times still just remembering which way is left, which way is right. That course that I was running was a six minute time limit and that's a pretty common uh, time limit for a 10 gate course like that. So that would have been a course you would run across pretty often in a comp situation. Now, I don't think I would use four wheel steer as much on a trail situation as opposed to something like dig, which this truck also has. I really like to run dig in my trail trucks, but four wheel steer is definitely one of those things where you're definitely in technical situations. You know, you've got a difficult rock pile, things like that. You're trying to find your way through it. Granted, you don't always have to use it. It is the nice thing about it, but some things to think about either way. But overall, I'm happy with a capper again, which has not been the case up to this point. So lucky for me, I've got another truck I like now. <laughs> with that though, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe if you're not already, and hit the notification bell so you see the videos as soon as they get uploaded. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you on the next one.